the numbers actually do matter and the type of guests that I would like to bring on because I would really like to have some high caliber people. They would speak to my avatar really well. But all of this also comes from personal growth finding that confidence that I have something to offer. Most hosts never achieve the results they hoped for. They're falling short on listenership and monetization, meaning their message isn't being heard and their show ends up costing them money. This podcast was created to help you grow your listenership and make money while you're at it. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Adam Adams. What's up, podcaster? It's your host, Adam A. Adams. And... We are going to do something a little bit different. So if you've been listening to the podcast a while, you've never heard what you're about to hear. And so be excited. Be real, real excited. On screen with me, for those of you who can see, is somebody who's been a friend of mine for at least three years, because I remember when she was brand new starting her podcast, and I was one of the first guests, and she was a guest on my show as well. Now, we've become friends over all this time, and she's helped me out with things that I needed to do in business, in my podcasting business, in my real estate business, and vice versa. We've always been pouring into each other. And what ended up happening recently was she hired our company to take over some of the editing and post production and do a little bit of marketing for her. So we have decided. And she was generous enough to be willing to be vulnerable here. And together, we've decided that we are going to actually bring you along with this journey. Over the next six months, we'll do an episode every other week. So anytime she schedules a coaching call with me so that I can pour into her business, we're going to record that and we're going to share it on the podcast. So it's going to be really fun, really exciting. And without further ado, let's have Julie kind of introduce herself and also talk a little bit about her goal with her podcast, where she wants to go. So Julie, I'll give you the floor. Awesome. Well, thank you. And I'm glad that I have an appropriate mic to use at this moment. (laughs) Um, Anyway, yeah. So I've been podcasting for three years now. And can I go into that? Can I go into pain? Because I just feel like I'm at the ER right now. That's how I feel. I'm like... Oh my gosh, someone get the little electronic pads out and like resuscitate. <laughs> and that's how I feel with this podcast is I've had this podcast, I've rebranded, I've tried a lot of things on my own and it's not growing and it's frustrating. And I've been like following you. But first of all, I need to interrupt my own self and say, you have already been this huge, powerful influence on my podcast. You've given me so much guidance. And I don't even know that you realize how much guidance you've given me in my podcast directly and indirectly through just listening to podcasts on podcasting. But you gave me one of the best tips. And I don't know why I didn't adopt it sooner. You're like, Julie, why aren't you recording all your podcasts in one day? I'm like... What? I just got to do this. I'm a new podcaster. I just got to work with everybody's show. And you're like, Julie, why are you doing that? That was a while back, wasn't it? That was when you recorded on my podcast and we spent an extra 30 minutes after we recorded and you're just dropping knowledge bombs (laughs) on this new podcaster. (laughs) I'm a fixer. I'm (laughs) like, here's something you can do. Here's something you do. I do that to everybody. I'm sure it it drives most people nuts, but I'm glad it worked out with you. It totally didn't drive me nuts. I was a late adopter, but once I started implementing those that information, like, okay, these tips and strategies, it was such a game changer. And then here I am three years later, I have nearly 300 podcast episodes and I've been consistent like you, that integrity component, you've spoken on it on your podcast, especially recently. I'm like, the integrity component is really paramount, especially for our listeners. Like, If I'm not showing up every week and they don't really know what to expect, that's a bad relationship. That's dysfunctional. They're going to walk away, right? (laughs) Let's maintain a healthy relationship. So I've been consistent. And yet, even though I've been consistent, I haven't seen the growth that I want. If any of my listeners somehow come across this episode, which you probably will, they should know. I value, I tremendously value those people who are in my listenership. Like they are seriously the reason why I've continued on three years in as a download for like so nominal. Like Adam, 
I don't know, six months ago, I was getting, I don't know, 98 downloads or something stupid. And I mean, like a whole year ago, it was like every episode, maybe you'd have around 65, 75 downloads. And it was just killing me. And I was in, I just like absolutely embarrassed of all of that. It was embarrassing. Well, a couple things. So you're above 150 right now. You definitely don't need to feel embarrassed. If I can interject and share a couple of things. Years ago, I started my first podcast. And I remember speaking with another real estate influencer at the time, who you definitely know, Julie, you've probably spoken on his stage before. You've probably had him on your podcast more than once. You've probably been on his podcast. The point is that he and I were talking at about a year, maybe nine months into our journey. And we were having like 30 downloads per episode. And a lot of people knew who he was. A lot of people could say his name and they followed him. They invested with him. But his podcast and mine were both getting around 30 downloads per episode. This is like nine months in. And I started to try to figure out, I don't want to be just that. I wanted to figure out how to get a little bit more traction. So I started doing some marketing, Facebook, organic marketing. Somehow my phone thought I was talking to. I don't know if I said something that sounded like S-I-R-I, -I, but she thought I was talking to her. Anyway, several years back, I was especially embarrassed. And I remember I asked him, how many downloads are you getting? And he's like, um, not very many. And I'm like, well, how many? And he's like, well, you first. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't have hardly any. I'm not going to say the number first. And I'm like, mine's probably less. So you can just go ahead and say it. <laughs> and he was like, 35 downloads per episode. I'm like, that's where I am. I was probably at 34. Less. <laughs> but the point is that that's where we were. That's where we started. That was months into it. And I understand the feeling that you're mentioning. And I know that the listener probably has that as well, where it's like, I'm spending so much time, money, effort, resources, and I have been doing this for however long, and I'm not quite sure if it's paying off. I don't know if I'm bought into the fact that this is worthwhile to spend the money and the time on the podcast. That's how I felt. And I think the listener is feeling that way too. The couple things that I wanted to say is, number one, I only had like 30-something. Number two... After working really, really hard, I started to get into the hundreds where you are right now and working even harder and speaking on a lot of stages and using that as a call to action when on stage. Oh, my episode number 242 is all about finding markets. So if you guys want to listen to all of these things, you can just listen to episode 242. So I would like drop an episode and it started to build. Now, I would be in front of maybe 600 people at one smaller conference, and I'll say that. And then my downloads would have spiked by 50. So instead of 35, I'd have uh, 85. But the, Wait, was the, it one of those spikes on the stats too? Yeah. Where you're like, oh, I spoke right there. <laughs> yeah. And you're thinking, you're hoping that it stays that way. It doesn't always stay that way, but it did become to where... It kind of like a snowball as it was building up on itself, getting bigger and getting more momentum at kind of like a bell curve. So we're able to get it where I had 30 and then 100 and then 300 and then 3000 and then 6000. And it made me really, really happy because I knew that I was like pouring into people and I knew that I was making more money because of it. Like I was able to monetize, have the podcast put money in my pocket instead of out. But it took that decision and it sounds like you're making that ultimate decision right now. And the last thing that I was going to say just real fast is, is that 158, is it what you're having per episode on average? That's the current predictor. Predictor. Okay. So like in the 150s-ish, just so you're aware and so the listener knows as well, that's above average. Average is under 100. Most people don't get less than 100. So you're getting 150 right now. That's better than average. And top 10% in the world is 300. Top 1% is 3,500. And then you start going even higher. But just know that 
at least you're above the 50 percentile, <laughs> like obviously. So anyway, keep going. I cut you off and I want you to keep going. No, no. I love it because we always have these just natural conversations and that's what I love. And what you were saying is that's great. It's above average. I wasn't really tracking the numbers for a long time. And this is a little bit how I was consoling myself initially is like, okay, why did I launch this podcast? Well, I live on the Canadian border in North Idaho in a town of 2,500 people. And I just got into real estate syndication. Like, how am I going to get it? I can't go start a meetup group. I don't live in Denver anymore. I don't like all of these things. And so, I mean, the impetus for even starting the podcast was, okay, I can connect with other people, expand my network and add value to all my listeners and grow in that capacity. So like, initially my husband would say like, okay, just remind yourself, like, why did you start this episode or this podcast? And I'm like, okay, because the numbers were so low. And then I'd be, okay, wait, it's serving its purpose. It's doing what it should do. But I've grown and now I have a beautiful network of the most extraordinary people. And now I want to serve more people. And I can't serve more people if I'm not growing my podcast and having a healthy dynamic there. So now it's, I had to really have this whole awakening moment and just say, okay, the numbers actually do matter. And the type of guests I would like to bring on, they want to see that they're going on a podcast that has a strong listenership because I would really like to have some very high caliber people. They would speak to my avatar really well. But all of this also comes from personal growth. I had to start believing in myself, believing in my mission and finding that confidence that like, no, I have something to offer. But on the podcast note, just to dive back into that and not to bounce around too much, but I literally was trying everything and the podcast was taking all of my time and all of my life and making sure it's all scheduled and making sure because the first year I self-edited, the second year I brought on an editor but it still required so much of me. And here my business is growing and I'm trying to still babysit a podcast. I'm like, I don't have time to do both of these. I can't have both worlds. And that doesn't make any sense any longer. So then we threw in fast forward a little bit to bring everybody up to speed. Then I realized while I was hiking with a friend last year, last September, beautiful hike and My friend says, Hey, how would you describe your podcast? I said, Well, it's a. And my friend says, Would you say it's like you're the conscious investor? And so the whole hike with my family and his family is like talking about this whole conscious investor. So I decided to do a whole rebrand. And I thought, Adam, seriously, I thought, okay, if I rebrand, that's my ace in the hole. It's going to be my relaunch. All my stats are going to go up. Like, this is going to be amazing. Because I didn't understand when I launched the podcast initially, I didn't even know what I was doing. I didn't have you in my life at that point, like to guide me in any capacity. And so I didn't launch correctly. I did everything wrong. So I'm like, oh, I'm rebranding. I can relaunch. I can do this myself. It's going to be great. And it didn't. And that's really where I had that whole come to Jesus is like, well, You've really run out of steam, haven't you, girl? Like, you've really tried everything on your own. And that's where everywhere else in life will say, we need who's kind of like Dan Sullivan's book, Who Not How. Like, oh, we need who's in our life. And yet we don't actually invite the who's into our lives. And I made excuses like, oh my gosh, it's so expensive. There's no way. I made all of these excuses as to why I can't work with Adam at Grow Your Show. And then you know, the moment I was like, I'm done with this. You draw the, you talk about this in the podcast on podcasting, draw the line in the sand. It's not just for our avatars. It's for us. Like, really, do you want this podcast or not? And so I drew a line in the sand and like the money is just a vehicle and you figure it out. You just have to have faith, but taking that belief in myself Oh, I mean, it's like, how much do you believe in the product that you're producing? And so I'm investing in myself and I'm investing in my show so that I can support the people I want to support. I can reach them, which is a whole purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Julie, there's a lot of that that you just said that is really sticking with me. There's one thing that you did mention, like how you launched your podcast, but 
it didn't really gain any traction in the very beginning. And it's been kind of challenging for you to get the traction ever since. And that's a thing that the listener who's also a podcaster really needs to understand for themselves is that the first eight weeks of launching a podcast are very, very important. You know, when I launched my podcast and I had 35 downloads per episode after like nine months, and when that other influencer that you've heard of that you know that hosts conferences and all that only had 35 downloads back then as well, it's because he didn't do this and I didn't do this. And back then, I had a few friends, Taylor Lowe, Whitney Sewell, Stephen Pesavento, Jason and Peely Rusi, a bunch of other like podcasters that they had the opportunity to work with these first eight weeks. And when they did do it the right way, like Whitney Sewell, for example, because they were able to focus on gaining the traction during that period of time, Stephen Pesavento, they had their podcast ranking in the top 1% in the world in a very short amount of time. And so some of those things, I had conversations with them before they launched. And not as a consultant, I wasn't getting paid back then, but those same things that they did during those first eight weeks are the things that we teach our clients now. And so if you're listening, if you're hearing this, you might not recognize all those names and that's okay. They're just in the real estate space. If you're in the real estate space, I know that you've recognized those names. But the thing that I was going to say is for you, if you haven't launched your show yet, or if for your best friend who's about to launch a podcast, it's not up, it's not aired. We need to pour into you and instill into you or your friend that those first eight weeks are make or break. Yes, Julie is doing some things now. And also, we're going to be doing some paid advertising for her. So that we basically will run Facebook ads on her podcast behalf. We will have a private message campaign, reaching out to people individually, starting relationships with people and taking it where they eventually we're going to offer for them, hey, you should listen to this episode of this podcast. It's really good. So it's going to work. We're going to make it happen. Even though we're past the eight weeks, we're at the three-year mark now. It's going to work. It's just going to be more challenging, more time-consuming because we didn't take advantage of those first eight weeks. I launched my podcast by putting out two or three episodes And then the next week I did an episode and then I waited like three or four weeks, like a month-ish before I did my fifth or sixth episode. And because of this inconsistency, the podcast algorithm said, "Ah, this is just another one of those random guys that's not even going to finish. We're not going to put his podcast in front of anybody. But when Jason and Peely started their their podcast, when Stephen Pesfendo started his podcast, when Whitney Sewell started his podcast... A thing that they did was consistency, more episodes. And now the podcast algorithm says, holy shit, this person is really focused. Let's listen to their podcast. And they listen to it and they're like, this is value. We need to put this in front of more people. So they trigger algorithms. And now those people get picked up and they become top 1%, 3,000, 6,000, 12,000, 18,000 downloads per episode because what they did in the first eight weeks. Julie, I just wanted to mention that real quick because that seemed like such a big thing. I also liked the part where you were talking about that awakening moment, how the numbers actually do matter. Um, They actually do help you leave a better legacy. They actually do help you make more money. And so I'm excited to see you in this journey to be a part of it, if I can, anything that we can do. So while we go ahead and we're going to start recording your onboarding call, We're going to record as we look at on the onboarding call, we'll go through your avatar. That'll be the next episode. We'll go through your avatar. We'll figure out who that avatar is. I'll ask questions. This will be like how we onboard you as a client and how we think about it because the avatar questionnaire is so important. And then we'll move into more coaching calls where you're like, I want to monetize. How do I do that? We'll talk about you specifically or any other parts that you're asking like, 
should I change this? Should I change my microphone? Should I change my editing? Whatever I should do, we will pour into you. We'll record it. So this is episode one of 12, if you're listening. And you're going to see they're all going to have Julie Hawley's name on them. And they're all going to be like one of 12, two of 12, three of 12, four of 12. This is how we'll be labeling them. And as part of the titles of these episodes, these 12 episodes, it'll have like a little hook. Now, you remember, I always talk about hook, story, offer. That hook is basically going to be what are we going to talk about on this episode? So it'll say Julie's name. It'll say the episode number of 12. And it'll give you that quick feedback of what you'll probably learn, what we're going to be talking about on that coaching call. So stay tuned. Let's get into the onboarding call. You'll hear that in about two weeks from now because we're doing every other week for six months. And I really hope you get value. Julie, what do you have to say to the listener or before we kind of wrap it up today? Could you just tell I wanted to say something? I almost like threw fingers. Like I got to say something. (laughs) (laughs) No, I just wanted to say thank you. I'm really excited about this collaboration. And for you, you know, fellow listeners, I listen to podcasts on podcasting. It's an extraordinary show and I've already tried the DIY. And so I want to use this as a vehicle to really support you in knowing that you're not alone and that you're not in this journey alone. Not everybody is just launching. You might be similar where you've had your show for six months or five years and you've stuck with it and you're frustrated. And so I'm hoping that I'm going to be so transparent and that's really uncomfortable. So please know that's really uncomfortable. But my commitment to you is that I'm not going to like candy coat anything so that you can really see what's going on and pick up what is going to support you. And then you're going to find maybe areas where it's going to be beneficial to draw a line in the sand and believe in yourself. And that's my hope. And everything on the avatar that we're going to speak on next, goodness gracious, do not miss that episode because I'm going to debunk a lot of your thinking on avatars um, because I've worked hard on it. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Thank you for doing that. Hey, I don't want this to be cut out. So I'm speaking to you, my editor of the podcast right now. Don't cut this part out. What I want you to do is take the very beginning like uh, bit when Julie was switching her microphone. We'll put that blooper in. We'll have a little blooper at the end of this episode. So why don't you cue that up right now? And if you're listening, I'll see you on the next episode. You know, I really don't say this nearly enough. I don't mention this and I feel horrible because it's a great resource for you to be able to take your podcast to the next level. And it's simply a free resource that I don't need your email or anything. It's just a podcasting course that I created that is ended up putting in the very first six episodes of this podcast. So if you haven't checked it out, definitely going to want to just check out those first six episodes, see how they can help you improve your podcast, get in front of more people and have a better result where you're making more money through the podcast, etc. So much can happen after you listen through episodes one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if you haven't done it, go do it now. And by the way, if you're subscribed, you'll keep hearing more great content. So to those of you who are, I'll see you on the next episode. <laughs> you haven't even had coffee. So will you um, show me the mic? Okay. It's Blue Yeti. Ah, that's the deal. I was oh, like, this on. thing is so Oh my sexy. gosh. Hold on. Look, I also have from your website that I ordered. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I was like, it's a little echoey and it's picking up some extra sounds. Okay. So I used this one, this other one, and the person was like, oh, there's a clicking sound. There's something weird going on. And she's like, we concluded hmm. that it was, it seemed like it was a mic, but this is one of the mics that was on your website. I'm just going to look cool. into some of these other options. So is this better? the sound. Yeah, it's much better. Is it clicking, making a clicking sound or anything weird? I don't think so. I don't know. The person that I was the first used this with, they're like, there's I can a clicking hear sound. You like touching your desk and stuff, like moving things. Yeah. So it's almost as sensitive as the Blue Yeti was for picking up some of those noises, but it's a way more clear vocal. 